The U.S. and South Korea flew fighter jets around the Korean peninsula in an apparent show of force. The latest action comes after months of missile launches from North Korea and the threat of the first nuclear test in five years. So for more, let's bring in director of the Asia program at the Wilson Center, Sumi Terry. She also worked at the National Security Council under President Bush and President Obama to formulate, coordinate and implement U.S. policy on North Korea. So, Sue, you are clearly the person we need to talk to about this. How real is this threat of North Korea starting nuclear tests? And how do you think the U.S. and its allies should respond? Well, it's very real. I mean, Kim Jong-un is coming to power about a decade ago, has gone farther than his father and grandfather on expanding his WMD program. He conducted four out of six nuclear tests, over 130 missile tests, including three intercontinental ballistic missile tests in 2017 and more recently on, on March 24th. And, you know, the the pace of military expansion, uh, this expansion has not slowed uh, since, you know, even after the widely publicized Trump Kim three summits. And in the past year, North Korea tested a whole range of ballistic missiles, right? New submarine launched ballistic missile, a train mounted ballistic missile, hydrogen uh, missiles, all in its effort to diversify its capability, to perfect its arsenal, and to really defeat American missile defenses. Um, and so, you know, this is very concerning development. And on top of all of this, North Korea is now saying, you know, they are going to develop tactical nuclear weapons and they are going to test uh, tactical nuclear weapon. Uh, and that, you know, Kim Jong-un has also talked about potential preemptive use of such a weapon. Mm. Uh, his sister mm. also made such a statement. So this is very concerning development. Um, I know we're very distracted with all these other news in the world, but we need to be paying attention to this. So, Sue, given those provocative kind of statements, what did this recent show of military force by the U.S. and its allies accomplish? And do you believe it was the right response to North Korea's missile testing? We do. I do, because we don't have a whole lot of options, right? Um, you know, but that said, will this deter North Korea from conducting a nuclear weapons test? No, it will not. Um, they will absolutely go through uh, more testing. And I think for us to even get to the negotiation phase, we will have to go through this another round of crisis. Um, the problem is the external environment is actually good for North Korea to conduct more tests. Look at what happened United Nations uh, Security Council. China, Russia could not, they, first of all, they vetoed U.S. effort to, um, to you know, add on more additional sanctions after the last ICBM test. But China and Russia couldn't even come to, we couldn't even come to an agreement where we would condemn an mm. ICBM launch. So that's really sort of giving a go-ahead to North Korea. I mean, if you're Kim Jong-un, what's to stop him from right. conducting more provocations? There's absolutely no consequences. So well, at, at minimum, what we can do is show force like we're doing right now. Right. So to your point, then, what's to stop him? And at minimum, we can show this force. Do you see any diplomatic way to quell tensions with North Korea? And, and how would we get to that point where sort of constructive talks can resume? Unfortunately, I don't see a way of, for us to get to the, that phase. And, and first, we have to go through this crisis first. Mm -hmm. I mean, Biden administration have already said they are willing to talk to North Koreans, to, willing to sit down with North Koreans anytime, any place. And Kim Jong-un has not taken that offer. Mm -hmm. We have even floated vaccine diplomacy. Now, North Korea is going through uh, COVID issues, right? They're, they're actually now dealing with Omicron uh, breakthrough. Uh, but, and of course, North Korea is only one of the two countries that have not vaccinated these people. So we have even tried vaccine diplomacy, but nothing is working. I think North Korea is bent on getting to the next level with their nuclear missile program, perfecting their arsenal. So unfortunately, I don't see a way for us to get to negotiation stage until we go through another round of crisis. So really quickly, I just have one last question. What do you think the end game is then for North Korea? Where do you think they're trying to take this? North Korea wants to be Pakistan. North Korea wants international acceptance of North Korea as a normal nuclear weapons power. You know, after Pakistan conducted a nuclear test in 1998, the West sanctioned Pakistan, but in 2001, you know, 9-11, and we 
now normalized relationship with Pakistan. That's what North Korea wants. They want to get to the next level with their nuclear missile program. Or at minimum, for them to return to negotiation, they want to increase their leverage. And for them to increase their leverage in negotiations, they want to advance and modernize their nuclear missile programs. It's disturbing to hear yeah. that that could be the end goal here. Sumi Terry, Sue, thank you very much. Sure.